Hello, welcome to another Train to Code video, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the timers built into the console object in JavaScript. So you know how you might do console.log in JavaScript? Well, today we're going to be exploring console.time, and we're going to be using that to measure how long certain parts of our JavaScript code take to run. Timers are supported in the console object of virtually every execution environment of JavaScript. So you can do this in Node.js, you can do this in Firefox, in Safari, in Edge. Um, in today's example, I'll be showing you how to do this in Google Chrome. So let's get started. First, we need a JavaScript web application with some code that we can profile. In order to very quickly create something, I'm going to use Vite.js. I'm just going to set up the default project that you get with Vite. Vite is like a bundling tool, a bit like Webpack, but it's just very, very fast and it's very lightweight and it's perfect for these little demos on my channel. So to create a new Vite application, I'm just going to create a new folder in here, call it examples. And then we run npm create Vite at latest to boilerplate our new Vite application. I'm going to select vanilla and TypeScript. And then we can run these commands here. So cd into our new directory and do npm install. And then npm run dev to get our development server running. Great, and I'm just going to open up Visual Studio Code. OK, now let's have a look at the V application that we've created. So I've opened VS Code, and you can see that here we have this source folder with a file called main.ts. And this is our demo V app here. I can open up Chrome, and I can navigate to the IP address that we got when we started the development server. And you can see we have this Vite plus TypeScript app. And there's a button here that you can click to increment this little counter. Now, if we go back into the console, you can see this setup counter method that's just being imported at the top of this file. So just hit F12 and jump into that. And here is where the method, this is what the method's doing. It's adding an event listener to the bottom element that calls this function that we've assigned to a variable called set counter. Now, this set counter is what's changing the text inside the button element when you click on it. And the element here is the button on the page. So what we can do is we can add on a console.log into this function to log the current count to the console. And then we can test that out in Chrome. So I'm going to open up DevTools by right-clicking and choosing Inspect. And you can see here we have the console. And then each time we hit that button, it prints the number out to the console. Great. So we have a project set up with Vite, and we can log to the console, and we can see that appearing in Chrome. This is a really good starting point. Start playing around with timers, and we're going to be timing the execution of this set counter method. Now, in order to make this a bit more visible, what we need to do is make this set counter method take a little bit longer. At the minute, it just uh, comes in here and it executes a couple of lines of code and then finishes very quickly. So what about if we simulate this method doing some really long running call? So maybe it calls off to an API or it does some really expensive computation inside the method. Well, to simulate that, we can use the set timeout method in JavaScript. So I'll wrap this uh, element.innerHTML assignment in a set timeout, and I'll give it a timeout of 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. Let's actually put this in curly braces so that we can add a few more lines in here as well. Right, now let's add a couple more console log lines. We'll log when we enter this set counter method, and then we can log again when we've assigned the inner HTML method inside the timeout. And what we should see here is that the starting method is logged as soon as we click the button, and then ending method is logged after one second, because that's inside the timeout. So let's test that out. So we're going to click the button, and you can see it starts, uh, it says starting method, and then it waits a second, and then it says ending method. Now, to make this a little bit more interesting, how about instead of just waiting one second, we wait a random amount of time? So we could do math.floor and then math.random and multiply that by 2,000. So this means we're going to take a random number between 0 and 2,000 and then trim off any decimal places. That's what math.floor is doing here. It's removing any decimal places. So now we will have a random delay of anywhere between 0 and 2 seconds. So let's try that out. Click the button. And you can see that the first one was doing really, really quickly. And then we do it again, and it takes a little bit longer. You can see the console is logging starting method, and then there's a delay, and then it logs ending method. Great. 
So now we have a function, setCounter, that takes a random amount of time to execute. This is a good thing to apply a timer to and to measure the execution time of this. So where we have this console.log, let's delete that and just type console and then dot. Because we're using TypeScript here, you can see IntelliSense in VS Code opens up and it shows us all of the methods that are available on the console object. So at the bottom here are time and time end. Time starts a new timer and time end stops it and prints out the length of the time since it started. So at the start of our function here, we'll start with a timer with console.time. And we'll need to give our timer a unique name. Now you can have lots of console timers running at the same time. So it's important that each one we start has a unique name on it so that we can stop it later. So we'll call this counter and then the current counter value. Down here then we'll do time end and we'll need to put the exact same string in here as we had when we called console.timer. That way it knows which timer to end. So it's like a stopwatch. You click it on and then you click it off. Now let's go back to Chrome and test this out. You can see that when I click this button, the console prints out how long the function took to run. So 57 milliseconds, that was a really fast one. Click it again and this time it's 1621 milliseconds. So this time delay, remember, is a random number between zero and two seconds. So click it a few more times and you can see the timer object is measuring the execution time of our function each time and printing it out into the console here. Okay, one more thing we can do, because this is Google Chrome, in DevTools we have this performance tab. It might sometimes be hidden under the context menu at the top, but for us it's just in this tab here called performance. So the way this works is you hit this record button and then Chrome's DevTools will start measuring performance data for your application, including the timers from the console. So let's do that, hit record, and then let's start incrementing this counter. When we've done a few of these, we can stop recording. And if you look here on this swim lane, you can see that the timers have actually printed out onto this timeline view. So we've got counter six and counter seven and so on. And the length of the bar there is the length of the time that the function took to run. So this is really cool. It lets you place timers all over your code and you can actually visualize in this window how long each of these functions is taken to run and you can compare them against each other. Now I do want to show you one more thing, because I mentioned you can have as many timers as you want. So how about in this code, we can add a second timer that just wraps around the element.innerHTML assignment. So we can add a console.time and a console.timeEnd, and again, give it the same string as the argument. What this will do now is it will time just this one line of code in the middle here. So if we jump back and we can test this, you can see that each time we hit the button, we get two timer values printed out to the console. We get the time that it took to set the inner HTML, which is very, very quick. That's just a few milliseconds. And then the time the entire function took to run. So let's run that once more and you can see it measuring it again. Great, so that's been timers on the console object in JavaScript. As I said at the start of this video, you can do this in Node.js as well. So if you have some JavaScript running on the back end or in a cloud function or something, you can still take advantage of this console.time method to measure the time it takes to run parts of your code. Console timers might not be the most feature rich performance profiling tool for your code, but they are so easy to do and you don't need any um, external libraries or anything like that. So I think this is actually a really, really useful way of doing things. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, Train to Code, um, and if you've got any comments, pop them in the comments section below, and I'll definitely get back to you because this is still quite a small channel. My name's James Charles, and I'll see you in the next video.